If I was to ask you what's the role of women in film, in an ideal world your answer would be hero, villain, leader, no different to men. But we don't have to look back too far for the answer to have almost always been a thing to be looked at that sometimes speaks. But surely that's not the case anymore, this is the 21st century. What? In this video I want to look at Laura Mulvey's male gaze theory and have a think about whether or not it still applies today. Now to really understand male gaze theory, we need to think about it within the context of when it was written. 1970s Hollywood was a long established male driven industry. So you would have male executives who would fund pictures made by male directors who would make films made for a largely male audience. This resulted in overly sexualized representations of women in the media. Take a look at these texts. Why are they wearing so little? Introducing the fabulous Raquel Welch, the sensational star discovery of this or any other year in one... You're on again, Bambi. Chick, chick, chicken ranch has been recouped in the song and dance. And I'm <laughs> This is the basis for Laura Mulvey's studies. She coined the phrase male gaze, which as it sounds, explains how women are exhibited or gazed upon by the audience. Movies, for example, offer an unparalleled opportunity for audiences to act voyeuristically. Now, couple this with man's dominance of the industry in the 20th century, and you have a medium which nearly always views women from a man's perspective. Now, there are three perspectives to consider with male gaze theory. That of the producer, the audience, and the male characters in the film. Let's start with the point of view of the producer. Even now, it's a fairly high likelihood that if you're watching a media text, it's been probably mostly made by a man. Now, Mulvey argues that because of this, the camera lens, in effect, is taking a masculine point of view, meaning that we are going to view women from that male perspective. And a lady should be modest. Yes, a lady should be modest. And so we have shots that needlessly linger on the curves of a female's body, basically reducing them to no more than eye candy for a heterosexual male audience. Which brings us to our second gaze, that of the male audience and the primal desire to just look at the human body. This links to Freud's work on scopophilia and the idea that humans get uh, sexual pleasure from looking at naked bodies. After all, the age-old adage is still true, sex sells. And media producers know this, and they're more than happy to give in to our primal desires if it means box office success. Finally, there's the male gaze of characters within the text. In this case, it's argued that the women are there to be looked at by those characters. Now, this may be to draw the audience's attention to the woman's body. I can open one up there, but I will need some help. Or I think sometimes it's a kind of wink between the guys in the movie and the guys in the audience, almost sharing a joke. Either way, having the men in the visual driver's seat subliminally puts men in a position of power over the women. And that's the whole point of this really. In each of these cases, the female form serves men for visual pleasure, be it the filmmaker, the characters or the audience. Now, you might argue that ultimately this is quite harmless, but consider the implications of having men decide what we do and don't look at. Ultimately, it's going to reinforce a patriarchal society. Which brings me to my question, is it still true today in the 21st century? Certainly there are far more female producers than there have ever been, and it's not difficult to find a strong, unsexualized leading female in a Hollywood blockbuster. These texts offer a far more equal representation of gender, but it's not difficult to find texts where they're still treated as objects. So the key in my mind is going to be finding where these texts are happening and understanding them within their context. So there are a few places in my opinion where you can still find a lot of male gaze action going on, and they are video games, comics, and action movies. That ought to do her. Now, I'm not a fan of generalizing in the slightest, but you could argue that traditionally these texts are aimed at a young, testosterone-fueled male audience. Hence, we're seeing women playing a primarily aesthetic role in these texts. Now, I'm not saying this excuses these representations in the slightest, but I think it does go some way to explaining why they're there. As for how dangerous this is, I'm not really sure. On the one hand, you could argue that this is just part of the process of young males learning what it means to be a man in the 21st century. 
But then again, on the other hand, you could argue that with these texts as their role model, gender equality is still a very, very long way off. So that's my take on where Mulvey fits in the 21st century. What do you think? Do you agree or have I gotten it completely wrong? Please let me know. Um, I'll always be uh, glad to reply to you. And as always, thank you for watching.